good morning uh, let us today discuss power transmitted by a belt power kiman power adal belt transmit koribo paribo ami tak derive korim so p power transmitted by a belt rope is given by the formula p equal to uh, under bracket t1 minus t2 into p the p hole power in watt t1 and t2 these are tension on the tight side and the slack side in belt respectively in newton yate t1 minus t2 is the effective tension v is the linear velocity of belt in meter per second now how can you find v v can be find a we can be found out by this formula pi d n by 60 and d is the diameter of the pulley in meters and it's the rpm of the pulley so this is the formula so if you want to find the power transmitted by any belt drive it will be given by this formula p equal to t1 minus t2 into v and t1 minus t2 is known as effective tension and v is the linear velocity of the belt it will be in meter per second next thing is to find ratio of the driving tensions driving tension is very important because this will be used in various uh, uh, used in to find uh, solution of various problems so this this one is important so driving tension will be different for flat wheel and it will be different for b wheel so let us first derive the expression of the driving tension let us consider a flat wheel if you see the figure uh, we have considered driven pulley of a belt drive so the in this pulley if you can see the belt is moving from the slack side to the tight side and uh, look at this figure at point c the tension is at t2 at point d tension is t1 and let us uh, um, define these parameters um, let t1 tension on the tight side of the belt t2 tension on the slack side of the belt theta angle of contact of belt with the pulley now uh, s uh, let us consider the cd is the portion of the belt is in contact with this driven pulley so cd is making an angle theta at the center of the pulley that means the portion of the belt which is in contact with the uh, pulley is as uh, i mean this cd portion is making an angle theta at the center of the pulley mu coefficient of friction between belt and pulley so mu is a coefficient of friction between belt and pulley now let us consider small portion of the belt we are not considering whole portion of the belt we are considering small portion of the belt let us consider ab ab this ab portion makes an angle delta theta uh, remember the whole portion cd made an angle Uh, theta at the center. Now we have considering small portion of the belt. A B is making delta theta at the center. Now let us consider at point A tension is T, and at point B tension is T plus delta T. Remember the belt is moving from slack side to the tight side, so gradually the tension is increasing. That is why at point A we are considering T. And at point B, it is T plus delta T. That means the tension is increasing. The belt portion AB is equilibrium under the action of following forces. Now uh, that means uh, so uh, when the belt moves from uh, slack side to the tight side, this AB portion of the belt will be under the forces of this this kind of forces. Number one. tension t in the belt at point a number 2 tension t plus delta t in belt at point b 
Number three, normal reaction R at C. Number four, frictional force mu R. <coughs> now remember, uh, uh, when the uh, when this belt is moving from uh, slack side or tight side, that means here in this figure, uh, the belt is in clockwise direction. That is why mu R is in this direction. Suppose this uh, belt was, uh, suppose this belt is moving from the uh, uh, suppose in other direction that means uh, if it is moving in anti-clockwise direction the mu r direction will be different that will be opposite now next step is let us resolve these forces in tangential direction uh, that means uh, if you remember resolving the forces in x direction and y direction similar like this you have to resolve the forces in tangential direction if you resolve these forces in tangential direction um, and you will find uh, mu r is equal to mu r plus t plus cos delta theta by 2 is equal to t plus delta t cos delta theta by 2 that means you have resolved all these forces these four forces you have resolved in tangential direction that means in the cos direction you have got this formula so since delta theta is very small you can write cos delta theta by 2 as equal to 1 so your equation becomes mu r plus t equal to t plus delta t and you can write mu r delta t after simplifying it similarly you have to resolve this forces in radial direction that means in sine direction and after resolving this you are getting r is equal to t sine delta theta by 2 plus t plus delta t sine delta theta by 2 again when delta theta is very small you can consider sine delta theta by 2 as equal to delta theta by 2 so, so ultimately your um, the expression becomes r equal to t delta theta by 2 plus t delta theta by 2 plus t delta t into delta t theta divided by 2 now this delta t into delta theta divided by two very small so, so we have neglected it will be ultimately if you combine t delta theta by 2 plus t delta theta by 2 it will be t theta delta theta so, uh, now this is expression number 2 substituting the value of r now you are substituting uh, the value of r in equation number 2 then equation number 1 becomes mu r delta theta delta t sorry so uh, so it becomes mu t delta theta is equal to delta t now this is your equation if you simplify this equation you will get delta t by t mu delta theta now you have to integrate and uh, this term uh, between the mm, tension limits t2 and t1 so after integrating you will find um, log uh, log of t1 by t2 is equal to mu theta uh, after simplifying you will get t1 by t2 e mu theta here t1 by t2 is the ratio between the tension on tight side and slack sides. 